Hotels are getting more sophisticated with music, customizing playlists room by room and the time of day, and increasingly using it to attract the clientele they want. WSJ's Andrea Peterson joins us now with the story. Hi, Andrea. Hi. So talk to us about why hotels are doing this now and how they're going about you know, curating these playlists. Well, some hotels, you know, cutting edge boutique hotels, brands like the W have been doing this for a long time. But what's interesting is that it's moving to some more traditional and story brands like the Four Seasons, like Rosewood, and they're really upping their music game. I mean, you know, the luxury segment is very competitive. You know, they they're they're competing in all in all areas, and they're trying to really you know, create more energy in their properties and draw millennials, draw locals. Those are that's an increasing part of their business, especially for their restaurants and bars and spas. So they're doing things, there's actually a whole industry of like these music curating companies that have cropped up to create kind of bespoke playlists for different, they divide the hotel in different zones so that you'll have a much different playlist in the spa, for example, versus you would in the fitness center or the lobby. Um, so it's, it's, and I mean, speaking of the lobby, that's actually one of the, the zones that's sort of the most challenging for hotels because especially during that check-in, check-out time, a lot of people say it can sound like a business meeting. So they, that's actually when they sort of amp up the, the volume and the tempo of the music to sort of cover up that kind of business meeting sound. And I would imagine that choosing the music that you're going to play in a hotel is obviously maybe a little more challenging than picking what you're going to play in a restaurant just because you get so many different people coming through and they often right. stay for longer at a hotel than right. an hour or two sitting down at you know one of maybe one of their favorite bars. Right. I mean, if it, yeah, I was actually talking to a, a, a patron at the Park Hyatt in New York last night, and you're saying that you know if, if yeah if you're going into the same elevator four or five times, you know it can really drive you nuts if you've got the same song on. So yes, you know so there's a, there's a wider demographic that hotels are attracting, and then also um, you know you're going to be spending a lot more time there than you would in a in a typical restaurant or or um, a retail shop. So the music choices in the playlists are, you know, made to cater to the clientele and to the people coming in. But I would imagine that they probably benefit the employees to some extent that's, as well. I, yes, that's actually, you know, what was, uh, Rocco Forte actually, who about 18 months ago, you know, hired a uh, former DJ and you know to to do their curation. And they said that one of the side effects is actually their their um, employees were much more energized. They could really even actually see it in the service. The service was more, you know, um, amped up and and uh, people were more excited about it so that that's definitely one of the one of the perks of, of, uh, of doing this. And is there a certain, you know, particular music genre that hotels are going for in particular? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it, it, it really depends on the space. I mean, there's certain, you know, there's certain actually no-go places. We have some, several people said that actually hip hop is sort of much more, you know, people are really polarized on that. So they tend to stay away from that in hotels. Also, smooth jazz is really out. As someone said to me once, no one wants to hear Kenny G playing in your lobby. Um, a couple, you know, sort of that sort of really mellow, loungy music that was like ubiquitous a few years ago. People seem to be moving a little bit away for, from that. Um, a lot of hotels are really interested in, in um, you know, kind of bridging that, you know, that. There's a fine line between, you know, something that's, you know, that's a little cutting edge and a little avant-garde, but that's not going to, you know, scare anybody or alienate anybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for joining us, thanks. Andrea.